picture is worth a thousand words, especially when that photographer who's taken the pictures turns whistleblower. But now Simon Edelman is out of a job. Here's how it all went down. Edelman used to be a photographer for the U.S. Department of Energy. At a meeting last March, he got this shot. It shows newly minted Energy Secretary Rick Perry hugging coal executive Robert Murray. Yes, that Robert Murray of Murray Energy. That company was blamed in the deaths of nine miners in August of 2007 and collapses at the Crandall Canyon Mine in Utah. That case led to the third largest fine ever levied against a coal company. Okay, back to Edelman's photos. At the time they were taken last spring, Murray was a major donor to President Trump. And Simon Edelman also happened to get a shot of something else that day. A photo of a sheet of paper in which Mr. Murray basically presented a confidential action plan. That plan called for policy and regulatory changes that would be very friendly to the coal industry. And there's more. But uh, let me bring in Simon Edelman and his attorney, John Ty, to tell more of the story. Welcome to you both. Thanks for Hello. having us. Simon, I'll ask you first, why did you decide to, uh, to hand over these photos to the media? Sure. Um, it, it, was, uh, it was very simple. I mean, there, when I was in the room, I, I heard and saw what I uh, later noticed when the secretary put forth his proposal of FERC. Um, the two plans seemed very similar. And it wasn't until uh, Mr. Murray actually said in the news that he had nothing to do with that proposal that I was kind of enraged and, and said, you know, th enough is enough, and decided to put forth the photos to the press. It was and and after, after they went public, what happened? Uh, after they went the public, the, next, the very next day, I went into work, and they gave me an administrative leave form uh, that said, They'll put you on administrative leave with pay, and they didn't explain why. And then they escorted me out, um, and I tried to grab my personal laptop, which was used only for personal um, use, and my other equipment. And they refused to let me take it with me. And and then I so right now I'm out of my you know thousands of dollars of personal equipment that I brought in because I was dedicated to the job and I was doing you know the good work for the American people. Um, so I don't have access to, to that anymore, and that and that includes you know that includes things like my pictures of my father who recently died of, of cancer. Like those are the only copies I have are on that computer. So it's not just about seizing my things. It's like there's personal, my personal things are on there, my personal memories and. Um, gotcha. And, and, yeah. So 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 I want to go through. You know, you, you took pictures of these documents that Mr. Murray brought into this meeting with the U.S. Energy Secretary Rick Perry and um, Murray's papers detailed this action plan to revive the coal industry. Mm -hmm. What did that include? Well, when I was in the room, um, it was evident that they were old friends and they got right down to business. There wasn't, there wasn't like small talk, which I, I had noticed been with a lot of the visitors was a lot of small talk. So they got right down to business and, and Mr. Murray was very passionate about what was laid for in the plan. He, I mean, he was speaking about the, the cover page, about the grid resiliency and the reliability, and he went over certain talking points that were in there about, you know, Obama's war on coal and, and the need to act fast and do this. And, and the secretary was, was del you know, listening and taking notes, and then he just he simply said, I think, I, I think we can help you with that. And, and so I, I had left, and and didn't really think anything of it until later when the proposal was put forward and they, they matched very similarly with, you know, they might have changed words, but resiliency and reliability right. are the same thing. And, and I just want to make clear what was in Murray's papers, right, because you could read it from your photos. So yeah. Murray's action plan included this, replacing members of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, pulling the United States out of the Paris Climate Accords, and revoking the Clean Power Plan. As far as you know, Simon, um, and as far as I know, these most of these things have been implemented by the Trump administration. Correct. Yes, um, and and there's I think there's many more on that list that have been implemented. So to me, it was a, a clear case of um, ethics violations, insider um, trading, or or like a quid pro quo. Um, you know, he had given hundreds of thousands of dollars to both uh, Secretary Perry when he was running for president, and then President Trump. Um, I think over three hundred thousand dollars for his inauguration committee and certain things, and so, um, and in addition, uh, the president told Gary Cohen to do whatever Murray wants him to do. So, um, uh -huh. 
when you come, when this was not a, a usual meeting, when someone comes in, lays out a plan, and then later the plan um, comes out into the public for a policy decision, it, there's something wrong there. Okay, I want to talk specifically about um, why the Department of Energy is so angry that you took pictures in this meeting, and I'll, I'll direct those questions to your attorney, John Ty. Okay. So, so John, um, it was a private meeting, and, and Simon was there to take pictures for the government, not to make those pictures public. So why shouldn't he have lost his job? Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me point out, the government has never explained why he lost his job. Uh, the, within hours of the photos becoming public, uh, he was put on administrative leave. He had an agreement to extend his appointment uh, for two years, and that was revoked, and he was instead uh, effectively fired within a few days after that. So uh, the government has not come out and said why he lost his job, and I believe uh, they know it would be illegal to fire him because he's a whistleblower. And so they have refused to even say one way or the other why he's been fired. Um, and what, but, what, go ahead. Yeah, and so uh, the photos themselves, first of all, any photo taken by a U.S. government employee in the course of their work is automatically in the public domain. This is not like a private company where the company owns the photos. In this case, because the U.S. government uh, represents all the people, all of the photos that Simon took are automatically in the public domain. Uh, so he uh, it was legally entitled to share those with whoever he wanted. Um, and th the government actually instructed Simon to save those photos on his own personal Google Drive that Simon owns. So this is inside a Google Drive that Simon owned, and these are uh, photos, uh, you know, owned by the American people, not uh, by any by anyone else. Well, well, here's the thing: the Department of Energy they put out a statement, and they said that you know, all of this is based on Simon's subjective opinions, and he has a personal agenda. And that's why he released these photos publicly. I, I don't think that's true at all. Uh, Simon, when he, uh, the day before he took office, and Simon can speak to this, he swore an oath, just like every civil servant, to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And uh, in this case, Simon was really acting to protect the law. He saw an example of public corruption. Uh, he shared it with our free press and was then fired for it uh, in violation of a whole host of laws. I have to leave it there, but we'll continue to follow the story and we'll see, Simon, if you ever get your equipment back. Thank you. Or your job. Thanks to you both for being with me today.